One of the things I wanted to, well, not one of the things, the thing I want to discuss tonight is the diversity in the bourbon industry and the diversity in the spirits industry. And it's something that, that, that I've witnessed firsthand, and it's something that, and I was asked to talk about something that really impacted me, and that is what I kept coming back to. So before I start, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, I grew up with a very positive family influence. Uh, grew up in eastern Jefferson County, and we were a family who, we were a very accepting family. You know, we never talked negatively about any person or any particular group or anything like that. So I had a pretty good upbringing in that regard. But uh, I was definitely a product of my environment. Now, being a product of our environment, that's no excuse, right? But we are products of our environment. Is that correct? Would everybody agree with that? And what we do with that as we get older really kind of dictates the type of people that we turn out to be. So um, as a, in, in middle school, uh, late elementary school, middle school, uh, we moved out to Oldham County. Anybody from Oldham County here? Anybody from there? Okay. So Oldham County back in the 80s was country, right? I mean country. Uh, the good old boy network. Now we moved to Oldham County kind of about the time, and I hate to use the phrase, they call it white flight to the suburbs. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what happened here in the, in the mid-70s and early 80s is there was busing or court-ordered busing or desegregation. And I really hated that word desegregation because as a family, to us it really wasn't about that. It wasn't about desegregation, it was about busing. And I was going to be on a bus for about three hours a day going to school in downtown Louisville. So we decided as a family that we didn't really want to do that and my parents were kind in that regard because can you imagine being on a bus for three hours a day as a kid? Um, so we moved to Oldham County. Now, one of the things that struck me in moving out to Oldham County was is I would go into the Dairy Queen and you would see the same old guy sitting in there every morning solving all the world's problems. And I moved back to Oldham County and I, I swear the same old guys are out there right now solving those problems. And, and in a couple years, I'll be one of those good old boys sitting there solving all those problems. So, um, so let me fast forward a little bit. I started a little bourbon brand a few years ago with my father, Lincoln Henderson, who dad was, a, was an icon in the bourbon industry. Not just, not just an icon, but a wonderful person. And in case you've been living in a cave, which apparently you haven't because you've come out to hear about bourbon tonight, bourbon has exploded in the last 10 years, right? Things have happened that none of us could have expected and none of us could ever have dreamed would happen. And by, by way of history, bourbon was really not a very diverse spirit. By diverse, I mean your typical bourbon drinker 10 or 15 years ago was probably a white guy, 40 years or older. You know, I mean, it was a pretty narrow demographic, but one of the amazing things I've seen over the last few years is that's really different. Things have changed. Our demographics are wider. We're, we're more inclusive. Not that we were exclusive for a reason. It's just that's the way it was, you know? So we see things change, and as things change in the bourbon industry, truthfully, I changed as well. So I've always lived my life not viewing people based on labels or based on sex or race or sexual orientation or anything like that. But, and I was always troubled by judgments that were made by people based upon the worst common denominator of whatever group you were, you were talking about. So, so like I said, something's changed in my life and it really has to do with my experience in the hospitality industry or in the service industry. Now, <clears throat> The people here, and the folks behind the bar, you'll probably agree with me here. People in the service industry, especially bartenders and mixologists, are an amazingly creative group. They are um, very crazy also. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot going on there. Very creative. And on top of that, but more important than that, they're very giving, very kind-hearted, and a very inclusive group of people. So once again, very diverse and really diverse in the many things that I never experienced growing up. So now I have this amazing group of friends in the industry and I'd like to share a few things about some of them. The first one that comes to mind is a guy by the name of Edgar. And Edgar used to work for me in San Francisco. And the only way to describe Edgar, um, well, there are lots of ways to describe Edgar. Edgar's about five foot tall, uh, native of the Philippines. And Edgar is about the proudest gay man I've ever met in my entire life. Now, Edgar proclaims his sexuality generally in every sentence that comes out of his mouth. Uh, I, I don't know if flamboyant is the politically correct word to use, but Edgar is just full bore a gay man, which, which, which I think is phenomenal. So what's happened with Edgar, if you can picture this, picture the country boy from Oldham County 
traipsing around San Francisco with little Edgar peddling bourbon. Uh, it's definitely a very enlightening experience. And, but I tell you what, I say, and I talked to Edgar last night, by the way, and I told him I was going to have this talk, and, and he, I have Edgar's blessing because we, we've become dear friends, but so very different people and so very different worlds, and, and bourbon is one of the things that, that brought us together. Um, some of you might have seen a few years ago, uh, there was an article in the New York Times about a special blend of bourbon that we did, and it was the Angel's Envy Kosher Blend. Crazy, right? So I got a call one day from Morty. Morty is the head of our distributor in New Jersey and New York. And Morty says, Wes, I would love to do a kosher blend. There's a, there's a great group of folks here in New York City, especially, that would love a kosher blend of Angel's Envy. And there are a lot of religious reasons why. So I said, okay. As I do a lot of times, I have no idea how it's going to happen. Uh, but I said, okay, Morty. We'll do this. So picture this again. I'm working in a blending room and, and, and with barrels with a rabbi, uh, the conservative Catholic kid from Oldham County, Kentucky, blending bourbon with a rabbi from New York City. And it, it's funny and it's a great picture, but more important than that, I learned so much from him. I learned so much about a religion that I didn't know, I didn't understand, and something that was very different to me. So once again, bourbon where you might have think it was exclusive, was inclusive in that respect, too. And lastly, I, I mentioned that uh, people in the service industry can be very kind-hearted. And a really good story about a friend of mine in Florida. It's a sad story, though. Uh, just married, been married for about uh, eight or nine months, was pregnant with his first child, and he lost his wife and his baby at the same time. And uh, it was a horrible thing. I can't imagine it. But... The thing that impressed me more than anything were people in the service industry and the bar industry that rallied behind this guy and his family. They rallied behind him spiritually. They rallied behind him financially. Here are people that don't make a lot of money, that, that live paycheck to paycheck, yet they were taking out of their pocket what they really didn't have to help someone that, that was in need. So once again, another example of people in the service industry that, that are so important to me. Am I doing okay? All right. Let's wrap things up here. You know, the growth of our brand has been very organic. Uh, we don't pay for ads. We don't enter any contests. We don't do anything crazy. And I think we've done, one of the reasons we've done well is, is that we're a truthful brand. We're an inclusive brand, just like the rest of the industry has become. And, you know, it's based on those family values that I always had, but I never experienced that uniqueness. So if there's a takeaway for me, you know, I've been touched and humbled by all these experiences. And in the past, and you may feel this way too, I might have run away from people that were different than me or people that are different experiences than what I was accustomed to. But now I run towards those people and I run towards those things that are unique and different to me. And really, truthfully, I cannot imagine living my wife life any other way. So thank you for your attention tonight. I appreciate it.